Hello and welcome. This is Tips for the Transition, the Career Roadmap. I'm Maria Tomas Keegan, and I created this show to share resources with uh, women to help them navigate career and life challenges and to know that you are not alone. So each week, I invite a guest to co create a show with me to encourage women to be more confident, resilient, and brave in their careers and their lives. So, if something inspires you today and you would like more of the same, please subscribe, comment, share, and be sure to check out the show notes below when we're done for ways to connect with my guest and me. So change in any life situation can be challenging, but making a career change is particularly difficult because it affects so many other things. The fear of making the wrong choice, or maybe the feeling that you're discarding hard-earned, long-devoted experiences, and all of that can weigh pretty heavily on you. But don't worry, because we are here today to address some of those common roadblocks uh, with my guest. My guest is Megan McCaffrey, and she's a colleague who shares my passion for helping individuals navigate meaningful career transitions. Megan's journey from educator to teacher to, I'm sorry, educator to nurse to business owner and coach uh, has equipped her with profound insights into the intricacies of making a career change. Megan's unique approach involves meeting clients where they are and expertly guiding them down new paths. So whether you're yearning for a complete career transformation, or maybe you're finally ready to pursue that long put off career dream, or you may just need a strategic pivot within the role you're in or within the company you're in now. Megan's practical and logistical methods, which start with mindset, will empower you to embrace change and thrive. So let's see what new possibilities we can conjure for you today. Welcome, Megan. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I, I'm so delighted you joined us today. You and I do very similar things, and we all have our unique ways to do them. So I am delighted to have you here to have this conversation um, because we are kind of kindred spirits, I think. For sure. So let's talk a bit about your diverse career. Tell us a bit about the transitions you made. So my first transition was when I was a teacher and I went on to become a nurse. Um, I think at that time, it wasn't that I didn't like teaching anymore. I just didn't see myself in it for the long haul or see myself really going after more in it. And I had this calling to be a nurse and I can, there's no other way for me to describe it other than a calling. It was just something that I felt driven to go after and wanted to do. So at the time that I decided to make the change to become a nurse, I'd been teaching for 10 years and I had already, you know, I had gotten married and had two children. So I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. Um, so that took, you know, a little bit of time, took about a couple of years, two years to, to become a nurse, to get my license. And then I started doing the nursing <laughs> job. Um, and so that transition from teacher to nurse was like, like I said, it was a calling. It was something that I was drawn to do and I just couldn't ignore it. Then uh, towards the end of my nursing career, I'm still a licensed nurse. I just don't practice with it anymore. But um, I'd say the last one to two years of my nursing career was when I really started to feel this um, pull like there was just something missing. I wanted more, um, just wasn't, and I had tried different jobs as a nurse. I wasn't just in one role the whole time. And I just knew there was something else out there for me. And so that's when I really took the time to, to get to know me again and what I wanted. 
and to kind of design a life based off of that, you know, and have my career go hand in hand with that. Um, so yeah, transitioning into becoming a business owner and coach was what that led to down, you know, eventually. So. Oh, I, you know, I, I love the way you put that. Uh, when you were a teacher, you didn't see yourself doing that for a long time for, or to take it to the, like the next level. Right. Right. And you had a calling. So I want to talk a little bit about, let's dig under that just a little bit. Okay. What did that feel like? I want to, I want people who are listening to be able to kind of see themselves in that as well. And I think when we talk about feelings, a lot of those things bubble up to the top for us. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about how that felt, that, that calling to do something really totally different? Although mm -hmm. I suspect you're a bit of a teacher when you're a nurse as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like all of the, you know, teacher, nurse, coach, they all kind of have a common thread through them. Yeah. Right. But different skills needed for each. Um, so the feeling of becoming, now this was, you know, 15 years ago or more, I'd, I'd have to do the math, but it was a while ago. So I have to really like put my, myself back in that place. Um, having a calling, it was, so I think, first of all, if you go back to when I became a teacher when I was in college, I was in my twenties, you know, I was young and it was more thinking about how I wanted my life to look based off of like knowing I wanted a family and these things and then evolved to having a, a job that kind of let me um, focus on my family also. And then I think when I had this calling to become a nurse, it was more like something that was meant, it was more for just me and something inside of me that I felt that I needed to fulfill. It was a desire, this nagging sensation of you, you need to pursue this. I knew I didn't want to continue and, you know, 10 years later, wish that I had done it yeah. or even further down the line. Like mm -hmm. I knew I needed to go ahead and see it through. Hmm. Yeah. So it's something that that you can, you said it earlier too, that you can't ignore, or if you did, you might regret. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you, I, you and I have had a conversation obviously before we met here today. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that you have made this connection between career transitions and the seasons, what I call the seasons of life or the stages of life that uh, we all go through. Tell us a little bit about how you see that connection. So I think most of this I kind of picked up on in hindsight. And then, you know, when I was reflecting back on As we those different do, careers, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so I think it's really interesting. And then I started noticing it in my clients as well, you know, of, of those uh, changes that were happening in their, their lives that made them want to shift their careers as well. Um, I think we all go through certain things as we're, you know, growing as adults, you know, we, we enter the workforce, we may get married or may not, may or may not have kids. Um, and I think another thing, you know, there's divorce, or I already said getting married, all of these different things that happen to us in our life. And whether we realize it or not, many times, our career choices can be based off of those circumstances in our life. And I think some people also, maybe when they're unhappy in their job or in their career, might not realize it could be one of these major life things that have happened in their lives that has caused this, like they're no longer aligned with their job because of this life change. So 
when you can bring awareness to that, sometimes it's like a light bulb going off, right? Like, oh, yeah, that job used to fulfill this part, this need that I had, but it no longer does. I mean, I can give an example of that if you'd like. Yeah, yeah please <laughs> it do. might make it easier for people to see. So yeah. I have two children. So a lot of my, my examples come based off of that. So one of my, like my change from being a nurse to a coach happened, you know, when I started having that feeling of not quite being satisfied, I also knew that my youngest daughter was, she was about a year off from going to college. And when I thought about that and that, she, you know, how my life would look differently with both of my children out of the house most of the time, I knew that what I was currently doing was not going to fulfill me anymore. The things that I had in that job were things that I needed in order to function as a single mom, <laughs> essentially, um, as far as a flexible schedule. I still want a flexible schedule, but it's for different reasons now. But those things were for, you know, that were being fulfilled. I knew once I had the, you know, emptiness, the majority of time, um, we're not going to be met anymore. And another one, if you have young kids, maybe you're used to um, having to, you know, your job gives you the schedule where you can bring them to school, pick them up from school, you can be there for all their after school activities, it might allow you to do all those things. But then once your kids are older and maybe don't need you to be as involved in those day-to-day -day things, you might notice that you're not feeling the same way about your job. And a lot of times it's because, or part of it at least, is because you're no longer needing that from that job. And maybe that's the main reason you picked it. And yeah. now it's not there anymore. Yeah. So what we're talking about here are all of the kind of influences, life influences that cause us to evolve mm -hmm. as we are, as we are going through those life seasons. And they, there are so many others too, that, that could influence how we feel or what we need from our career or our job. Mm -hmm. um, I think about some that have happened to me uh, where, you know, being caregiver mm -hmm. for um, my father at first and then and now for my husband. So those the, the things that have happened in my life have caused me to need something different from the work I do and the schedule I keep and the kind of flexibility I have the kind of responsibility I have in mm -hmm. the work environment so that I can be available when I need to be. And so I can be present for other things besides right. the work I do. Right. Yeah. So yeah, what I, I, let's just talk about some other possibilities of life okay, changes yeah. that, that could come so up. Some of the people. things I've seen in clients, um, I think not just the health of others, like you were speaking about being a, a caregiver for, you know, maybe an aging parent or a spouse, um, also your own health. I've had clients right. who have gone through their own health changes or health exactly. conditions that have made them reevaluate what they do in ways that maybe, I mean, it could be that maybe you can't perform those jo that job anymore because of your health status, or it could be you had something really scary happen to you health-wise, and it kind of made things, you know, it made you reprioritize what you were doing yes. in your life. And so you realize now that you don't want to waste your time at a job that's unfulfilling or that doesn't, you know, make you happy or when you're off, you're just dreading going back to work. You yeah. want to really find that thing that's going to make you have that joy. Cause I think whatever you're doing in your career, if you have joy in it, it's going to spill over to your life and vice versa. 
Absolutely. Um, I think another one that I see a lot also is um, maybe you went into a job out of college and you did the same thing for about, let's say, a decade. So now you have, you know, you've, you've got a little time under your belt. Maybe you're making more money. Maybe you have more time off and you realize maybe you want to travel more. And the job you currently have maybe doesn't support that. Maybe you have more time off, but the culture of the job is, uh, we really, you know, here's your time off, but we don't really want you to take it <laughs> kind of thing. Oh, right. And they yeah. realize, yeah. you know, like there's a guilt associated with taking that time off. Or there are limitations so, associated with that time off. You can't take more than a week at a time, stuff right, like that. Right. Yeah, I've heard a lot of about the, that kind of restriction. Yeah. Right. So then they decide they want to find either another job or a career that's going to allow them to live the life that they want to live right. as well. You know, I think it's becoming more and more important to people um, that they are doing what they love to do, not mm -hmm. so much what other people's expectations of them have dictated in the past. Uh, right. You know, living up to other people's expectations, becoming a lawyer or a doctor. We hear about that a lot because mm -hmm. everyone in my family is a lawyer or a doctor, and that's expected right. of me, right? It's to, you know, prolong the legacy of this, but it may not right. be right for this individual. They don't have the love for it, the passion for it. They can't right. stomach the blood if they wanted to be a doctor. And, not, you know, how did that happen in this family? Right. So what yeah. else can we can you do and how do you explore those options? So, right. you know, our priorities shift all the time. Yes. And. It can affect. The decisions we make. Mm hmm. So especially when it comes to making career changes, which are, I think a lot of people think that making a career change is like the biggest deal in their life. And maybe it is. Mm -hmm. It is only, I talk about it being, if, if we looked at, at all the aspects of our life, I do. I teach either between seven and 10 aspects of our life. Career is just one of those. So one seventh of our entire life. Yet mm -hmm. we spend at least one third of our waking hours at it, at right. least one third of right. our waking hours. So it has a big effect, an impact an influence yeah. on everything yeah. else we do to say nothing that it is, it is probably the source of income that allows us to do everything else in our lives. Right. So there's right. a big deal of, you know, it is a big deal. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, you know, like, like you said, your priorities change. So when you selected a certain job that you're in, you had a certain set of priorities. Mm hmm. And as you've gone on and lived your life throughout that, all of these different life things happen along the way and your priorities shift. And I think the important thing is to remember is that you can shift your career or job while you're, you know, while, while those life things are happening and changing your priorities, that you still have that choice to change if you want to. Right. It's not an easy one to make a lot of times, no. right? No. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, I said in the introduction that a lot of things weigh heavily on us when we think about making a career change. Will I be able to make enough money? Mm -hmm. Will I have to start at the bottom again? Mm -hmm. Uh what are some of the other things that might come up for someone who is thinking about making those roadblocks? What are some yeah. more of those roadblocks? I think people sometimes are, are afraid of the benefits that they'll lose um, yeah. when it comes to the job that they're in. 
Yeah. The, you know, maybe that can also provide a certain, like I had a client who needed certain health benefits. She really wanted to go out on her own, but she wanted to, she needed good, affordable health insurance. So that was a huge deciding factor in what she did next. Yeah. Um, I think some other things are, I think you already touched like seniority, like kind of, I'm going to, st- like you said, start at the bottom again. Another thing can be, you think you don't qualify for a new, you know, you think changing a complete career change will take so much time. Right. And there's mm-hmm. the thing of what you've already invested in where you are, like the sunk cost fallacy, right. That you've, I don't know if I'm sure you're familiar with that, but yeah. maybe the listeners aren't, but it's, you know, this feeling of, well, especially if it's, you know, you went to college and you got a degree and then you've worked in this industry for five to 10 years and you feel like it's all going to be for nothing. Right. If you change careers. Right. And I try to tell people, no, it's still, you're not starting over. Right. You're just moving on. And that goes with you, that right. experience. So that's right with the skills that you've learned. So I, yeah, I work with my clients all the time to help them translate those skills, identify what those hard and soft skills are, right. and then figure out how they translate into whatever is next for them. And what is that vision for them? What do they want? What are they? Mm-hmm. What? And then once they see, right, that those skills can translate, they understand mm-hmm. that right. they're not starting over. They are starting from here. Mm hmm. With right. all that experience, all the, the life skills and the career skills, uh, the hard ones, right. the soft ones, the things that translate so well into mm-hmm. doing something else and figuring mm-hmm. that out. It's a scary process for a lot of people to think about. It is. I think another thing that comes up for people is they're worried about what people will say. Yes. They, you know, not just co-workers. There's also your family. Um, I know for me, that was one of my biggest ones moving on to, you know, leaving nursing to becoming a business owner. I was, um, you know, my dad is probably my biggest, you know, supporter in my life. Like he's my biggest, you know, my number one fan in my fan club (laughs) Uh, after my children probably. But I was so scared to tell him because, um, I just, I was like, oh, he's going to, you know, I thought maybe he would be like, no, you shouldn't do that. You need to stay right. with what you have kind of thing. Right, right. And actually what I had conjured up in my mind was not the case at all. Yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, we do that so often, right? Me. We're, we're yeah. afraid of the judgment mm-hmm. and then we don't give them a chance to support us. Right. Yeah. Right. That's so and it's also realizing because- that. Yeah, if you do get the judgment, though, then that's that's on them. And you still get to make right. the choices for yourself in right. life. Right. And, you know, we have to, this, this takes some courage to uh, mm-hmm. stop living up to other people's expectations of us and start living uh, for our own, deciding right. what it is we want and understanding yeah. what the why is behind that and allow yes. that to be our foundation. And then we can right. push through any kind of judgment because we we feel confident about what it is we want to do. And yes, there may be risks associated with it, but they're mm-hmm. calculated risks. We're not jumping into something totally right. unprepared, right? Uh, and we're taking with us all of that stuff that experience, those skills. We're bringing all that with us so that we can learn new ones. Right. And I'm glad you said that about knowing your why. That is one of the things I spend time on in the beginning of coaching with someone is getting a very firm foundation of their why. Why And I actually call it your why, your who, and your when. Yeah. So we'll go deep into your why. And I talk to them about getting a a personal why, and then also like a professional why. 
because I think sometimes we feel torn, like we can't have, like it should be personal, but really sometimes it's maybe you want to make more money and that's okay. And so I try to encourage them to do a personal why and a professional why. Right. And then the who, a lot of times our personal why is tied to a who. It might not always be. It can completely be about yourself, but it can also be tied to, I want to do this because I need to be there more for my family or I want to be there for my family more. Or like for me, my kids are older and possibly will move away to have their own careers and lives. I want the flexibility to be able to go see them wherever they are, you know, so they're a big part of my who. Yeah. And then a when I always like to get kind of a timeline on where they're thinking in the beginning of where, when they would like to be in this new position. And that can change along the way sure. as we kind of narrow in on what they want to do if they don't know what it is they want to do. But I like to, it, it gives us a good starting point of, okay, this is my, my day, my goal of what I want, when I want to make the change. Yep. Yep. That also helps to um, just put some structure around the journey, the road trip that right. you're on here. Um, mm -hmm. to have a, an end date or an end goal that you can mm -hmm. strive for. And again, and obviously, like you said, it can move, it can move a little bit. Right. You can nudge it forward or backwards, depending on what happens and, you know, the divergent paths that come your way through the journey. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd love, I love that you, um, that you talked about the why, the who, and the when. I, I would insert a what in there. Um, I think that that has to be clear as well. Um, but mm -hmm. can you tell us maybe how this has played out for, you know, a client of yours? Mm -hmm. So as far as like the, the why, the who, yeah. Yeah. So I think the way I see it play out and I, I think of, a you know, like a few different clients, but where it helps them is as they are going through this journey, because we've got the why established pretty early, they start learning a lot about themselves, things they didn't realize. They do have a lot of these like aha moments for lack of a better word where they're start starting to understand their past choices and their current choices and how they can move forward um, i've seen it play out where they come in and they know they want to change but they really haven't pinpointed why they want this change and they might have a loose definition of it but not really haven't really put in the time to think it through. And I think that's where a coach comes really comes in, in clutch and handy for this because they really help you slow down. This is the one thing we're going to focus on for this hour. Right. So we can really get in tuned with why you're doing this as we move forward. And I've seen it play out where maybe throughout this path, an offer comes to them that they weren't expecting, like a job offer that they weren't expecting in the beginning of our journey together. And so when this offer comes through, we're able to use all of these things that they've learned about themselves, not just their why, but also their values is a huge piece of this. And sometimes I call it like they're like core, like pillars of who they are, of what they want in life and who they are in life. And they can see if it matches with those values and those, those core pillars of who they are and does it match their why and what they want. And so when you have this offer, now you have this such a good foundation that you can make a really solid decision and feel good about that choice. Because I think one thing when people first come to me is they, like we talked about, they're scared to make that choice. And one of the, th the reasons why is because they 
they want to know if it's going to work out, right? Like, right. is this actually the right path for me? Or am I making a mistake? Right. So as we can get all of this foundation work done, when you do get that offer to make a change, you have a better sense that it's the right thing to do. Now we can't predict the future, right? <laughs> like we can't control what's going to happen, but you can feel good in your choices. Yeah. And, you know, it occurs to me, Megan, that, you know, every decision we make is based on the information we have at the moment. Right. And that's mm -hmm. all we can do is make right. a decision based on that information. Cause as you said, we don't know what's happening tomorrow. Uh, but if you, if you base the decision on the fact that it honors your why and your core values, you can't mm -hmm. make a bad decision if it is based on that, if it honors those things. Right. And you can feel very confident that in the moment, and there's no telling what will happen after the fact, but in the moment, this is a good decision to make. And you can feel really confident about that. Yeah. And I'm glad you said the word confident because I think that is often whether it's something they're seeking or not in the right. beginning, it's a side effect of the, of going yeah. through this coaching, right. Is, is gaining that confidence in the choices you're making in who you are in what you want. And it's often and... the feeling that they come in with is that lack of confidence, right? Because mm -hmm. they're not sure of right. in your terms, the why, the who, or the when. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would no, for sure. Yeah. And I love that's one of the most, like, I'd say gratifying things as their coach is to see that because we get to see that journey and how they grow. And yeah. it's one of the best feelings ever to see, you know, how how far they come. I agree. The transformation that can happen when people uh, sit with this process. Mm -hmm. and kind of walk the path, the transformation they feel in themselves is tremendous. Um, and for us as coaches to help facilitate that, there's nothing more mm -hmm. gratifying in my world. Nothing more gratifying. It's really right. fun. And I learn as much or more about coaching about me about so much they teach me as much as i teach them i love the i love the 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 relationship that we can build with clients and and they are often long standing relationships mm -hmm. yeah and, as and they I, I think evolve, it makes as they evolve further i've had many clients come back to me and say okay what about this one now I, you know, <laughs> right. I've been, I've been thrown a little bit of a curveball here today. Mm -hmm. What about this? How do I get through this? And although they have all the tools in their tre treasure chest already, they need to be reminded sometimes about which ones to dust off that will help them mm -hmm. in this next process. Yeah. The seasons so of life, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> the seasons of life. So what would you recommend for someone who might find themselves struggling with making mm -hmm. a decision like this that we just talked about. Yeah. So I think one thing, and this is one thing I do at the very beginning coaching with somebody is to think about what you want for your future. A really, we get a very clear picture of the vision you have, say, they kind of pick their timeline, but it can be three years, five years down the line, 10 years, if you feel like you can think that far out and really think about how you want your life to look. It's, this isn't just about your career. This is how you want your life to look. You're, you can take into account maybe what will change over those few years. Like we said, we can't predict everything, but maybe, you know, we do know we'll have kids moving out of the house or maybe we know we'll get married or have kids or, 
um, those different things that are coming down. Maybe our parents are getting older. So really look at what practically is going to be happening in your life. But also, I want you to dream and think about what you want in your future, what you want your life to look like. Because we often get stuck in a pattern or routine of just in and out of our day-to-day life. And it can even be one that's like not really joyful or satisfying, but we get stuck in it and it's comfortable. Even if it's not a very happy one, it's comfortable because we know it. It's familiar. It feels safe. But if you can really think intentionally about what you want in your future, you can plan that path to make the changes you need to make in order to get to that future vision you see for yourself. So I think that's, first of all, that's like my biggest recommendation. Um, I think another good thing to do is remember that you have a choice, like we talked about, that you are allowed to make a change in your life to make it simpler or easier or more fun, whatever it is you're seeking, you can make the change to bring more of that into your world. One of mine was joy. I wanted to have joy. I wanted to give joy. And that is what led me to one of the things that led me to coaching. Um, And I think the last thing I would recommend is to really think about what your priorities are. Be honest with yourself. What has changed since you started this job or started this career? What has shifted in your life and what are your new priorities? Like literally sit down with a piece of paper and write them out. And because a lot of times your priorities in your life are going to determine how satisfied you are in your career. Because if the career, like we've been talking about, doesn't allow you to meet those priorities in your personal life, there's, you're going to have, you're going to have some, um, you're not going to feel fulfilled. And I think when you find a job or career that aligns with your priorities, it allows um, your career to align align with your life. So. And that brings joy. Yes. And that brings joy. And that brings joy. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, I love that. So, you know, there's some, there's some things I want, uh, I want people to take away from today's conversation, Megan, that I think are, are simple, not easy. Uh, but yeah, let's, so let's kind of wrap this up in a bow. We end every show um, with tips from my uh, from my guests. So you've just shared, you know, three really good practices. Let's just wrap mm-hmm. all this up in the bow. What are the what are the things they should take away from today's conversation? Well, I think yeah, just those. Remember, you have a choice, and I think to practically look at your life. So I like to, you know, in my coaching, I like to look at practical aspects. We dream a little bit and we focus on that mindset to make it all come together. So I think if you really examine your life and your priorities, especially if you're having, you know, maybe you're in a moment in a career that you liked and all of a sudden you're finding yourself not really enjoying it as much. One of the things to look at is to see if you've had one of these major life changes, something that has shifted your priorities. Sometimes we're unaware that that can cause the discontent at work. We might think it's the job. If I could interrupt just for a section, it occurs to me that we've been talking about life events that could uh, precipitate a a shift in us, it might Mm -hmm. also come from in within. Oh, absolutely. Right. It, it could be, it could be something that has happened to us, just the way we think about things. So the Mm -hmm. the way things, priorities or, or values shift, it could be an internal event, right? Yes. 
yeah. your perspective can change. Like we yep. talked about with like health scares or things like that. You're, you know, you see things differently. Yeah. Our values change as we, as they we do. grow, as, as they, they should. should, as they should. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. As yeah. they should. Yeah. So I think, yeah, just really get honest with your priorities and think about how you can intentionally make changes in your career that will complement your life, basically. Yeah. Because don't forget, it's only one seventh. Your career is only one seventh. Right. All the other things that go on in your life, but you spend much more time. So much time. Doing it that it, right. it has a huge effect. So aligning, I love to say, mm-hmm. when when your career is a soulful fit, it won't become a soul-sucking experience. And that's when it affects the rest of your life. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's how I used to describe one of my last jobs as a nurse was soul-sucking. <laughs> soul-sucking, yeah. So yeah. You know, I think a lot of us have been in positions that feel like that, right? It feels like it's they're just right. sucking the life out of me. And right. and I don't, it's not what I want anymore. It's probably not what I've wanted for a very long time, but getting caught in that, you called it, you know, stuck in the pattern, in that mm-hmm. comfort zone and being afraid right. that it's that fear of the unknown. There's so many fears mm-hmm. that can be wrapped up in this. Um, yes. Yeah, but just... Deciding first to do something for yourself, I mm-hmm. think, is is the first step. And then don't do it alone. Right. The support is so, so important. Invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Don't do it alone. Yeah. So valuable. Yeah. Well, Megan, I knew that you and I were kindred spirits when we first met <laughs> and, we, and our pro- approaches are a bit different, but... The end result is, you know, getting that transformation for our clients uh, mm-hmm. so that they feel like they are are working in an in an in an environment, uh, in a career, at a job that fulfills them so that they can enjoy the rest of their lives. That's really the yes. goal. That's exactly. really the goal. Yep. Thank you so much for joining me today, Megan. I really appreciate your sharing your time and your tips um, and your stories of other clients and a little bit of that process that you use. So I know that there are going to be some people who want to reach out and chat with you. What's the one best way for them to do that? I think the best way is to go to my website, which is coachingwithmegan.com. And I always remind people that's Megan with an H because Megan is spelled so many different ways, (laughs) M-E-G-H-A-N. And on on my website, you'll find a button where you can get a consult where we'll do a little bit of coaching. I'll find out about you and what your goals are and see if we're a fit for each other. And also, I have a fun quiz on there that Mm -hmm. helps you figure out if you're ready for a career change. And it takes less than two minutes to to do and you'll get lots of tips and tools delivered to your email email box with that too. Great. And the, and the link for that quiz is going to be in the show notes below. So don't forget to check those out. Megan, thank you again. I really appreciate you being with us. Same here. Thank you so much for having me. It is my pleasure. And for those of you watching and listening, I want to thank you. I appreciate that you are a part of this community And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot if you would subscribe, comment, uh, or click a star and share it. And as I said at the top of the show, uh, I love creating and sharing resources for women. Plus, as a career and life coach myself, I work with women to help them navigate challenging times more quickly and gracefully. So if something in this episode resonates and you would like a fresh perspective Let's talk about it. Let's continue this conversation in my private Facebook group called The Career Transition Roadmap. And the link for that is below in the show notes as well. So let's meet again here next Wednesday. As always, same time, same place. Because you know what? I believe it's our time to thrive. So let's thrive together. 
I'm Maria Tomas-Keegan. Till next time, I'm here helping you turn transition into triumph.